Okay, let's talk about how sound is done in Unity. So this video will be two halves. The first half will be just the very, very basics of how Unity handles sound. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about how we can use Easy Peasy Toolkit to play with sound. So sound is super, super basic in Unity. I guess the first thing we need to do is actually uh, make a sound file. So I have Audacity here. It's a very popular uh, audio recording program. So I'm just going to do some dumb shit here. I'm just going to go uh, and then let's go ahead and save this sound clip into our file system. So what we do here is I'm just going to export to mp3. I'm going to put it inside uh, uh, this Audacity folder here on my uh, file system and go bloop, 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 bloop. Um, Let's go ahead and save. Let's not be too uh, uh, fancy about it. So then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and take the files. This is the file that I just recorded just now. And we can just give it uh, to Unity. So the way we do that is we go ahead and drag it into our project folder. You can see that this is the easy peasy project folder, but um, uh, it can be any folder, obviously. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to put it in the audio folder in easy peasy toolkit. And now we have it here. So you can see there are pre-existing files that we could have used, but I just wanted to de demonstrate how easy it was to import a file into Unity. So you can see this is like the same one. Just go press and play. Uh, hopefully that came through with the audio. Oh no, it didn't. I need to turn on audio on, um, on OBS. Let's try that again. Okay, cool. So what, that, what we can do then is we can integrate this into a game object. In this case, we don't really need uh, graphics for the game object, so let's create an empty one. Uh, and then easiest thing to do is just basically drag this onto the game object. You can drag it either to the hierarchy or onto the inspector, it doesn't really matter. So in this case, I'll just drag it into the hierarchy. And let's just name this object something sensible, so like sound. C. <laughs> Very boring. Now you can see um, Unity has automatically added an audio source, audio source component uh, and um, just have a listen and see what happens when we press play on this. And it, I'm expecting this to make my sound. So basically what happened there was um, we have this play on the wake uh, option inside the audio source and basically that means that every time the object gets activated it will play uh, so obviously when we go press play and then at the beginning of any simulation it will just start the cool thing about that is um, you can turn it off and then when you turn it on again it's going to play and we can use that uh, to our advantage uh, but before we talk a little bit more about that uh, if you don't want that um, play on wake thing to happen. You just click on the play on wake option and it doesn't play when you start. So now you have the option of controlling um, how that works. Okay, so that's the very, very basics of how Unity handles sound files. Now let's talk about how we can uh, manipulate it using some of the Easy Peasy Toolkit uh, um, components. So we can see that we already have some pre-existing files here. Uh, and what they're actually doing is they're being manipulated by these easy peasy uh, objects. So let's just go ahead and see what happens when we play with them. So we've got sound A and sound B. I forget exactly what they are, um, but we'll find out very soon. Uh, so sound A, I think, is set to activate when we go into the blue trigger area. It's a ping. And that's a doorbell. Uh, and then same thing with these buttons, you go and um, so yeah, very, very basic kind of things. So if we have a look at the inspector events, uh, we can see that the on trigger enter on the, uh, the blue one, uh, and I've named it, named it play sound A, uh, goes to the sound A object and then basically goes into its audio source and then calls the play function. So that's essentially how we're going to be manipulating uh, the sound file directly. Uh, so we can do the same thing. So what we can do is uh, if we wanted to do something with sound C, uh, like we can either duplicate this and modify the object, 
uh, but we can just do things from scratch as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and do things from scratch. Let's go into um, the prefabs and let's have a look at the um, uh, basic interactables and let's just add a new area trigger in here. And um, let's call this one, uh, let's move it into the right location. And then let's call this one uh, t -t -t play sound C. And um, looks like the naming conventions has changed a little bit <laughs> between versions, but that's okay. Uh, let's just expand this a little bit so we can kind of see the whole name of the thing. Um, anyway, uh, we can pretty much do the same thing as what we have with the other objects. So what we can do is in, we just add a new um, pointer in this event. In this case, we're going to be going to the sound C object. And then we'll be looking for the sound C object's audio source. And uh, I think we'll just move this here so you can see the, all the options. Uh, and we just go ahead and say play. Pretty, mu pretty much as simple as that. Uh, and um, oh, that's gone invisible. So just go. So that wasn't me doing it just now, that was a sound playing. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't really fake that because I can't do perfect replication between those different uh, sound effects. Uh, I guess the one thing we could do is we could just um, say visible at runtime so we can actually see it. Yeah. Um, okay, what else can we do with this? Well, another way to do this is basically use the uh, play on wake feature. And this might be useful in some situations. Uh, like, like say, for example, you wanted uh, to make a sign show up, but you also wanted to get the, um, uh, get the sound to play at the same time. So uh, let's just pretend that sound C is a file. Uh, actually, let's let's add like a, an object to it. Uh, so we have some visual. So let's just make that a child object to sound C. And let's say this cube is some kind of a sign that you wanted to show people. Obviously, it's just a cube, but like uh, we can pretend that it's going to be a sign. And the idea here is we really wanted this um, sound of me doing that funny noise to play at the same time as when this box uh, shows up. So we can have the same effect. So what, th what we can then do now is we can modify this command instead of doing the audio source play, we can just go to the game object and then say set active equals true. Uh, so it's going to have the same effect, but it's done slightly differently. Um, and also like it's going to show up, obviously it's going to activate um, this whole object and then we'll be able to see the cube and then we have that effect. So let's just go ahead and press play. Hooray! Uh, yes, and uh, obviously this is just an event. You can do the same thing um, to uh, uh, if you had any other kind of easy peasy object. Uh, so I guess like you can, or any kind of Unity event actually. So let's say if we wanted to add a button that does the same thing, um, let's just go ahead and say add the easy peasy button interactable that's facing the other way. So let's make it to rotation zero. Um, and then let's move this to the right location just so um, we have cleanliness and it, the scene stays sane. So let's call this play C. Uh, well, actually, let's change the text here. Play C. Uh, and then let's change the event or let's add the uh, commands to the event. Uh, to activate um, our box when we press the button. I hope this video isn't getting too long. Um, but yes, let's go play C. And there you go. Okay, so that's Unity sound. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.